This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. So uh, the market is uh, in a really interesting spot here. We've reached the 4,600 mark and um, starting to show maybe a little bit of signs of distribution possibly. So what I want to make sure you understand is the time of the year has a role and also how big a month we had in November might play a little bit of a role. So we're going to go into that and then uh, uh, as we go through the market conditions as well as the individual time frames. Let's go ahead and get going now. Just briefly, if you want to learn more about my approach to the market, including MACD and ADX in multiple timeframes, I suggest starting with the book. I'm offering at a discount right now in an ebook format. Uh, go to rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book to check that out. Okay, so we start with the uh, market conditions on the left here. And um, sentiment made a big jump this week. Uh, we had uh, last week we were at 30% more bulls than bears. This week we're at 35%. Uh, the number of bulls jumped pretty significantly. It's up around 56% now. So um, we're in that zone. I mentioned last week 35 to 45 is the zone. So we're kind of on the edge, not thinking it's necessarily imminent, but we do have both a condition where we're short-term overbought and um, on a, using an RSI 5, we've, we've worked into overbought. In fact, we're, we've been very overbought on the daily, but uh, the weekly just in the last few weeks has gotten overbought. So that's turned negative. And then this week, uh, the jump in the sentiment is another concern. Now, what, what this means, it, this, is not, this sentiment number is not a timing indicator. All right. It's more of a condition that we want to keep an eye on. Um, and we're when, if we start to see any signs of deterioration, certainly here or potentially an increase in volatility, then this would come home to roost. So it's possible that, that we could have a bullish sentiment that could continue for now, maybe even into the end of the year. So don't jump the gun on this and just assume that we're up against 4,600. We've got a bunch of bears and we're overbought. It's time to get out of everything. All right. I, I don't play that way. I usually, when I'm looking at individual stocks, I play them as an individual investment. I don't let them, uh, I don't let the overall market rule uh, how I manage that, that individual trade. However, it will affect on new investments. You know, do I want to put new positions on right now? Well, this isn't necessarily the, the highest quality spot. And I'll, I'll explain why as we get into this. Um, but let's go into the volatility because right now we've got we're positive on both the daily and the weekly. And you can see it's pretty crystal clear that the volatility is dropping. This red line is the average true range. That's the size of these bars, including gaps on the daily chart. It, and as it continues to go up, this just continues to drop off a, a cliff. Um, we've been talking about this for, you know, two, three weeks now, and it's getting it's pretty persistent. All right. So um, I think that's a that's a positive. Now, we're probably due for some sort of a rally in the average range, meaning maybe a little bit of volatility increases in the short term just because of how far it's dropped uh, in a, a very short period of time. But let's go look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart has been from basically the beginning of the year has been trending lower. The moving average, the 18 MA of the average true range of the weekly has been down. All right. And that's kind of what's important to me. We did cross above that line, but that only puts it in neutral unless that line turns to the upside. But now we're back below that line. And in fact, um, that line is back is still declining. So we're, we have to put this in the positive camp. They're both of these based on the volatility is, is in a strong position. And you can kind of see it by the size of these bars starting to shrink. Now, there's some positives and some negatives into that I'm going to get into as we get into the, uh, the trend. Um, so right now, there was no changes in the trend conditions this week. We're getting really close. We're getting some, I think, uh, we're getting to a really interesting spot, and I'll explain uh, why. Now, before I get into the other time frames, I wanted to show you the annual chart or the yearly bar chart. All right. This is, this is a yearly bar chart right here. And um, so each one of these bars represents a single year. And this is essentially 2023. We opened up 30, 
850. We came down to about 3,800 and we've been pretty much going up for the whole year. Now, if we look at what actually happened, we started the year here on the weekly, moved up, came back and tested, and then we were pretty much up. And then it looked like this was actually going to be a potentially um, a distribution year, right? We had a terrible year last year. We rallied up into resistance and then it actually looked like maybe it was going to tail off and potentially form some kind of a big tail here. But what's what's happening now with only four weeks left in the year, we've worked our way back up to the upside. So what I do in any time frame is I look at as we get close to the end of a bar. So if I'm on a five minute bar and, and there's 30 seconds left in the bar, right? I mean, I'm probably leaning towards it's going to sort of look the way it, it looks. And um, especially if there's a lot of green like this, see how we opened up near the low of the year and now we're up near the high of the year. Um, so when I see that and it's getting this late in the year, I'm sort of assuming that we're going to finish up near the highs for the year, similar to what happened in uh, 2021. Um, and also in 2019, when you have uh, very little wick on the on the low side, you basically open, push down a little bit, and then you trend for the year. So you see these trend bars where we're closing near the highs. All right. So I'm, I'm kind of inclined to be leaning in that direction. Now, if we switch this to a monthly chart, uh, let me switch that, switch this to a monthly chart. There, there's also a factor, and I wanted to use this because you can see it in really bold colors here. This was a huge, huge month. All right. Now, typically, you know, this was also a huge month. You see that? Now, I want to show you what happens in this situation. When we get this far away from the four, you see how we got this far? We closed here and the four was way down here. What typically happens in a new time frame when you go to a new month is you fill in a little bit before you move higher. So it's entirely possible because look at where the four is right now. We should be and we probably will have some kind of a retracement in the early part of the month while this cups around. Could have a little bit of a tail. It's possible we could do that, but I'm just telling you, like the likelihood is by the end of the month, I think we're probably going to be okay. This to me is a bullish bar and you should expect some upside continuation. Now, what could happen is if we start out the first of, of December and get follow through and go right to a new high, then this could finish off the year maybe not so great. So we want to kind of see how this acts as it opens up a new bar, a new monthly bar. If we get a little bit of a check back, see, I'm just not seeing any signs of real momentum loss yet. So if uh, if we get a little check back here, I'd be more inclined to believe that it's trying to fill in a little bit while this is cupping around. And then, um, you know, this maybe has a little Santa Claus rally. And then the following month, this is going to catch up even more. Now, um, let's go ahead and move over to these these uh, individual time frames. So the monthly chart bounced off the 18 month. It's got a pinch play in place, really nice pinch play that developed on the monthly chart. Um, and let's go ahead and look at the weekly because I think this is really the key right here. We've rallied back up to 4,600. And if you notice, wanted to show you this because we break a trend line. That's the one. That is not it does not mean it, it's there's a 33 percent chance that we're turning the trend at that point it's not a greater chance that we're turning the trend down it's just it, it, we're starting the process now we've rallied up towards the towards here when, once we got up close to the 18 i put in these horizontal lines so now the question becomes does it get through here to the upside and not just barely if it just barely gets above it's still considered the two all right. But if we get far enough away that any kind of a normalized pullback would would actually look like it's going to hold this level, then it's no longer the two. So we got to watch this pretty closely. The other thing that could happen is that like I'm talking like we could have the first couple of weeks down and then turn back up. And I think that would be very bullish if it played out like that. So we've got a couple of things. We've got the pinch play on the monthly. This is a zero line reversal that has now crossed over the signal line. Those are pretty good conditions. So you'd almost want to think that we could form a little pinch play to start the uh, the month here. This comes down and holds. 
So I, I'm, I'm leaning towards this wants to push up into the end of the year, but I do think based on how big of a month it was last month, we could take a little bit bre a breather to start this, this coming month in December. So I wanted to make sure I got that out there. Then as we flip over into a new calendar year, then we have to start thinking and looking at that yearly bar chart and how we open relative to that open. Do we have follow through and then hit the resistance from the prior two years and start to turn down? So, you know, we want to have, <laughs> we're going to, I'll try and stay on top of that as we go into the new year. Uh, but the types of things we want to be watching. A couple other things that I think are incredibly important right now. We've made this move to the upside, but look at the strength. The strength in this and the fact that it's rising overrides the fact that we're showing a little bit of distribution. Well, a little bit of um, momentum loss, a little bit of distribution here. Not a whole lot. I mean, it's it's not, it wasn't a strong volume bar, but it did have a bad day. It was starting to roll down. Um, the uh, NASDAQ was down today, but not by much. It came back a lot. So... Um, we, we're showing some signs that maybe it's spinning around a little bit. We're showing some signs on the hourly that it's getting a little tired. You see how the ADX has dropped down under 25. It's even more blatant if you look at it on the QQQ. So um, we're, we're at a point now where we've got this exhausted look on the hourly where, yeah, we could check back a little bit. But I would be, I would be thinking that the 18 is going to hold on the daily right now. We could pull back, we could consolidate, maybe take a little bit breather for the first part of uh, December. But unless we start to see more signs of distribution, we're going to need to see bigger volume bars on the sell side before we start getting too concerned. And I would think you'd need to have at least two or three, um, you know, take place over the course of a couple of weeks to start getting concerned. But we are up against this high. How we react off that will be pretty important. But don't shy away from individual stocks if this starts to pull back a little bit. I would actually be using that as a uh, taking advantage of that just based on the fact that we're in a pretty good position. We've got a pretty good bias overall. And we have decent momentum now on the uh, on the daily chart. So don't chase stocks uh, and don't chase the market. We do want to look for pullbacks uh, for if we're going to do any buying. But um, I think you still have to have a positive bias overall. All right. Have a uh, have a good weekend and we'll see you next time.